Okay, let me explain the next little set of videos here. I uh, started a couple of weeks ago. I was kind of uh, inspired by a wind wall concept by Robert Murray Smith. And uh, I decided to just check out some rotors and things. So I started with a rotor that uh, sort of a typical Pavonius rotor. I uh, made the overlap a bit too great in the middle. Um, I won't try and modify that because I found a better rotor. I read a, a paper by some people at University of Utah a while back and uh, there was a rotor instead of being two half buckets it was uh, two scoops and uh, that they said was slightly better they had found it in the literature themselves and so I made one of those and indeed uh, it was better and it was certainly better than my one with too much overlap on the Savonius half scoop or half buckets or whatever you call it and uh, then I thought well the new one, the flat scoops, is great because it's the flat at the back. Uh, push the wind pushes against that, but when it's going back upwind, uh, then the wind is pushing against a flat surface as well, which is uh, counterproductive. So I uh, added a curved surface in front of the flat surface, so that when it was going back upwind, it would uh, have less resistance to going up the wind and I just went back to its starting position where it would get power again. Then uh, I, so, so this is uh, an evolution of the rotor from typical Savonius which apparently is about 18 to 20 percent uh, effective at catching the power of the wind to the new one with the flat scoops which might be presumably over 20% efficient uh, to the newer one with the profile that's actually different. It's got a thickness to it because the back is flat and the front is rounded. So it's more like an airplane wing which isn't just a flat piece of, of material. It's, it's got a thickness shape to it. And uh, so those three rotor designs each work better than the other. And uh, in the haphazard series of videos, I give some numbers that probably aren't quite accurate. But uh, <clears throat> the first rotor actually spun about 80 RPM on a, a second subsequent attempt, which was almost the same as the 82 RPM of the second rotor. But the first rotor is only 7 inches in diameter, and the second rotor is 10. So the actual linear speed going around the outside is considerably greater in the second rotor. And the third rotor managed, uh, instead of 80 and 82 RPM, it got up to 90 RPM, which is a considerable improvement. So I'm thinking I now have a Savonius rotor that's probably 25% efficient instead of 18 to 20%. And uh, then because I'm doing the wind wall idea, which has a frame around it, um, either it just faces the prevailing wind or else you're going to turn the entire wind wall. So at that point, I could put a vane in front of the rotor. And what that does is it diverts the wind away from the rotor as it's coming back into the wind so that it doesn't have as much resistance returning and it pushes that wind over to the side that's being pushed back and so it has more force behind it and that with uh, one vane I got up to 160 rpm and with two vanes I had a bit better luck I think <laughs> but it, the, the wind tunnel wasn't 100% consistent it uh, worked a little better just after you started than it did after it had been running a while. So I think I got up to 172 RPM with two vanes. So you see this is the evolution was from typical Savonius to the improved Savonius to 
the improved improved version with the wing profile uh, for this drag, and then to the uh, the the vane, the stationary vane directing the wind at it. And if you get 90% from the one with the best profile, and you go up to 160 RPM with the new uh, vanes aimed at it, you must have achieved a much greater uh, percentage of capture of, of the wind's power. Now these tests I did were all at, at the wind tunnels uh, RPM, or wind speed, with a three speed fan being low, medium, high, 2.1, 2.6, and 3.1 meters per second. So they're all pretty low wind speeds, and, and at the lower end, you have uh, friction overtaking the actual uh, power of the wind to turn the thing. But uh, anyway, uh, you can watch the video and you can just see the improvements as things went along, all in the last two weeks. And uh, I'm hoping that some point to, uh, not even some point, but some point soon, to actually produce these made out of uh, recycled polypropylene, which is a, a good tough plastic that's uh, it's, it's tougher and uh, much more sun resistant than polyethylene. And that's, well, I can watch the video and see what's next. It's all the, the technical improvement. It's not about anything else. Cheers. Okay, this is the original uh, Savonius rotor. And of course, it does work, but uh, what I found was that it didn't spin as fast as the newer design, and it also uh, I didn't get the proportions quite right on it. There's there's too much overlap between the buckets here. This is the modified wind jammer or Savonius type rotor and as you can see it's uh, far superior to the other one. This is uh, on low. doing about 80 rpm instead of 82 rpm I think I measured instead of under 60 a little under 60 the fan on high is about 3.1 meters per second which is still below where most uh, wind plants kick in so our aim here is a wind plant that uh, works well in low wind speeds. This was about 90 RPM. And if I can stop that, what we have here is the scoops profile of rotor on the side that the wind is supposed to push against and the more rounded profile that's uh, on the, the front side so when the thing is coming back there's less resistance to the wind. Now this is a new wind uh, shape for a, a Savonius rotor I believe. Okay this time behind the rotor we've put in a 45 degree oh, that's working but in a, a 45 degree angle <laughs> let's see I got this HD camera a while back what was I doing using the other one oh this one said needs charge so we're going to show the new rotor with guide walls, guide vanes. I'm 
you can see the tremendous difference. It's uh, spinning almost twice as fast with the guide vanes as it was without them. Same rotor, same everything. It's just those two diagonal boards running top to bottom inside the wind tunnel, which will become guide vanes in the wind wall. So there you have it um, for the actual production wind wall. I'm planning to have uh, two rotor shafts with rotors on them. Uh, fairly tall rotors and fairly big around too. Uh, so it'll have uh, considerable depth front to back, especially with the vanes. It might even be two feet front to back of the wall. It'll be about four feet tall maybe by four to five feet wide. It's all to be determined yet. Um, and I hope to use uh, some uh, generators I made myself uh, that are the axial flux with no iron in the core, ultra efficient, so you don't lose anything. And I uh, expect to get a fair number of watts. I expect that this, from what I've seen and measured and, and felt how much harder it is to stop that shaft when, when you've got the vanes uh, directing the wind, I expect to get uh, maybe 40% efficiency, which is as good as a Darius rotor, except you get it without the high propeller tip speeds and the noise that goes along with that. And then across the front of the wind wall, there'll be a grill or net to keep birds out. So I think that answers most people's concerns or objections to wind power, the noise and, and the birds getting in. It would only be little birds anyway. <laughs> But uh, we'll keep them out too. We wouldn't want them jamming up the rotors. Have a good cheer.